the cost of living has been on the rise. Unfortunately for them, there is no sign it's going to reduce. In fact, it is still going to go up. Like, for example, if you look at uh, the president said that, uh, that he is now taxing 14% of the GDP and it will slowly take us to 16% of GDP. That will mean that every commodity will go up by something like around 15 shillings. So t put it on hunger, put it on cooking oil, uh, put it on sugar, put it on cost of transport, fuel and the rest. And also that means that all the matatu industry will double the fares because there's what they call a predator economy. Whenever they hear small increment, they double. They don't just add reasonably, they double. Uh, also, if you look at the tax, the fuel levy, which is moving from 8% to 16%, we are not yet there. It will come. That also will drive that prices. Uh, for example, if you live in uh, Nukuru Kwanjenga, isn't it? Uh, when you want to come to town, if you normally use 50 shillings, you'll use 100 bob. Uh, if you are coming from Gidurai, you'll have to spend around, it currently is 150, it will go to 300 off peak. Rongai is 150, will move to 300 off peak. Um, uh, you go to Kawangwari, which is now 56. That Kawangwari 56, normally is 100 shillings a town, it will go to 150 to 200. So we are seeing that the cost of living will go up anyway. And uh, now the issue is, is it, is it, is it, is there any person on the ground who has options? Uh, for example, the richer you are, the options, the more options you have, because you can cut on luxuries and then you can go and spend on essentials. But you see, the households in Kuru Kwanjenga, the, the poor of the poor, if you like, those living on the bottom of the pyramid, they are living, first of all, in um, what we call informal economy. For them, it's so difficult for them to say we are moving from luxury products uh, to essential products because their main thing is rent, uh, food, and logistics. And food, you know, that's where sugar is, everything else. Logistics, where fuel is, movement. And then no landlord will lower their, their prices. So there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so what are your options of living? Could you go to a cheaper house? Those are options that people have to start talking about. Uh, maybe if you are living in a house that has space you don't need. And of course, when you go to Kuri Kwanjenga, you go to this uh, Gidurai, you find that people are living in the space where they are occupying nearly 100%. If you go to the rich, their houses, they, uh, they occupy only 10% of the space they look. For example, if you look at here, that person who has that compound, he only needs 10%, if not 5% of that space. Mm -hmm. If you go to a slum, it was so squeezed. I grew up in a slum, mm -hmm. whereby when the neighbors are talking, they can hear each other from either side. You can't tell anybody to squeeze much further, so rent cannot be lowered. Mm -hmm. The issue here is why you take kids to school. You might compromise a quality of school by if you are paying school fees to a higher school, maybe you can start compromising by saying, uh, let me not take them to very high-end schools if at all the value remains the same. So ask yourself all your expenses. Are there some expenses you don't need? But research as an economy shows that the poor people don't know how to spend their money. The rich people know how to spend their money more. Why am I trying to say? They're living in a Kadogo economy. You buy salt today, salt tomorrow, and sold the other day, and you are paying more of your money into the cost of packaging this food than actually the food. If you go to buy sugar and the package is 20% of the cost of sugar, and you go buy sugar again tomorrow, meaning that you are spending more on packaging sugar, so let them ask themselves, can they do some commodities, buy in a bulk? I'm sure the challenge they have is that they live from hand to mouth. But is there a way you can agree with your employer? or you can agree with your sources of money, that you can buy some things in bulk to avoid what is called packaging costs. If you go, Salma, in slums, don't you see more polythene, polythene peppers or packaged peppers than if you go to upper market? Meaning that the poor people are buying more packages than, poor, than rich people. So can you cut on the cost of packages? Another thing you can do, could you start buying food in your own container? by telling the, the person that I'm coming with my package for sugar, just pour for me here, if you can reduce this sugar by five shillings. Because some of them, they package for you sugar with five shillings, 10 shillings package, and they charge you. You go to buy vegetable, you are buying with so many packages. Could you start now having a, you buy a bag for shopping, 
and you can actually reduce that. Secondly, can you do some walking? I'm sure that this is painful, but there are some areas actually don't want to walk. People are using motorcycle too much. Of course, that also casts revenue on the motorcycle guys, but now this is where you have to be very selfish. What are you spending money you don't need? And also eating. People are overeating in slum area. This is true. Because when you see groundnuts, if you walk on the street in a slum, you see so many places to buy groundnuts, buy roast maize, buy choma, buy uh, mutura. And sometimes you don't need to eat that much. I believe that uh, hunger is, is, is actually man-made because people feel they need to eat more than actually what they need to eat. The body doesn't need those that much food. Can you cut on the food and eat what is enough? Because we overeat, uh, we overconsume, and also we, don't, we also don't want to know how to cut cost. So I'm trying to say in short that the poor is spending money on where they don't really need to spend their money. And also they tend to, tend to buy things which consume more from them. For example, you go to Islam, everybody has a mobile phone. They buy da data, data bundle, isn't it? The data bundle is how to know what Uhuru is saying, what Uto is saying, what Ayla is saying. And then they forward all these messages in WhatsApp group and the rest. And that consumes so much bundle. And they buy a data bundle. Research shows that among the poor people, the first time they get money, they pay rent. Second, they can pay electricity. And third, they pay food. And after that, then they start buying the bundle. Is there something? Some people even buy a bundle before food. Yeah. And sometimes you buy a bundle in the house. Your child has a phone with a bundle. Your wife has a phone with a bundle. Why don't you have a common internet to serve all of you together where you can pay? So even neighborhoods need to come with uh, community consumption. If you have a good house where you are living, let's say, uh, 10 people, instead of everybody buying a bundle for their own, can you have a common, uh, let's say, um, fiber that can offer this data to all of you if you need internet? Uh, at the same time, when you are in school, for example, you need, for you, you want your phone to have data bundle everywhere. You are in the Matatu, you have data bundle. Everywhere you have data bundle. And at the same time, if you go to school, there's free that bundle. That for you. So I'm saying there's a need for us. In short, we pay for our behaviors. Change of behavior can cut your cost. And you know that if you have bad behavior, you are spending more towards bad behavior. If you have good behavior, you're spending more towards good behavior. Can we start moving to spend more money towards good behavior, like some, something that generates knowledge, something that can generate income, that's something that can just generate for you travel? Because we get pregnancies in, rural, in these slum areas. We get people getting contracting HIV in these areas. So, and you realize those people get HIV in rural areas, in, in these slum areas, they spend money on things that create HIV. The people who get pregnancies or who give pregnancies in these areas must spend money on things that actually create pregnancy. Is having pregnancy, early pregnancy, a good thing? They are overburdening their parents with all of this. I'm trying to say that change your behavior because this government is not likely to change their behavior. They are not likely to change how they are going to deal with Kenyans. They are taxing everything. They are creating more money for themselves, unfortunately, without giving this money back to the people. And because of that, the only thing is that you need to change your own behavior. Dressing, we dress to kill in the slum. Rich people don't care too much about how they dress. But you know, for you, you want to dress to show that you are not poor, isn't it? And you spend so much money on things. Since you started dressing to kill, who has died? Nobody. In fact, some people don't even notice how you dress. You understand? For me, I have a shirt here, which I've used, it's even torn a little bit. I've used this shirt for over six years. I never changed it. Because I bought one shirt for six years. For you, change maybe your clothes every year to show you have a new shirt, you have a new trouser, you have a new shoes, shoes for Christmas, shirts for Christmas. This is how people dress on Easter. For us, whether it's Easter or not, we just live a good life. We really don't care too much about how people see us. We care about how we feel. So that's for me is change your behavior and uh, taking money where it matters to create for you income will be the best way to change how we can survive. Another thing they can do is I know that elections are over, but next time let's be wiser. Uh, elect right leaders who know about the economy. Uh, if the, your MP, this election was about political economy. It was about how economy is working bottoms up, top down. Why is it that we have MPs who have no idea about the economy? Only 2% of MPs in parliament understand the economy. 
Your MCA do not know totally how to run an economy. When they are passing things, bills in the assemblies, they have no idea how this affects people. You had an entire MP saying that this bill will pass even without a comma. That person has no idea how that bill affects Wananchi. So I'm trying to say those are long term, but short term is cut your behavior, uh, cut unnecessary expenses, sit down as a family, because normally there's a fear when the husband cannot tell the wife that life has gone up, they just pretend. Sit down and discuss with your family the economic impact of your behavior. In those slums, some people have microwave, isn't it? Some kids who every day you are microwaving food, you are heating food too, which has been cooked, can people eat at 7? If the mean time is, if the medium time for people to come home is 8 p.m., let the food be ready at 8 p.m., let us not heat food in a microwave. We are saving money on power because of cost of power is high. Let's change our behavior. There's nothing you can do about this government, but you can change our own mentality and behavior. Uh, are you sure there is nothing we can do uh, with the government? Uh, is there no way that you think the government can do to ensure that uh, the, the high cost of living maybe at, at a certain degree or at a, at a certain level, it goes down a little bit maybe? Maybe if, apart from uh, raising taxes, maybe another option that the government can do, at least they generate income for themselves as the... Governments are willing to change because they're running on a wrong economic model. Before the election, I said that the economic model adopted by the Kenya Kwanzaa government is dangerous for Kenyans. The articles are out there. I can share with you. In the economic model they are running, it cannot, they can't change their mind. And you have the president telling people, he was in his he said, you want me to do the road, you want me to do this, what do you do? Pay taxes. So he is pay taxes. And that discussion is not about to end. Let me tell you what, my dear, as an economist, a government should spend money even to the point of committing what's called a budget deficit to ensure people can afford essential products. But this government is unwilling and they are disinterested and they don't feel what Kenyans are feeling. So as far as I'm reading the government thinking, they are not interested. Because the president says he's going to increase taxes again. From what, he, what this bill says, he's going to increase it 14%. The presidency is going to increase to 16% to GDP. The issue is that what are they doing with the money? They are not using that money to help Kenyans' life better. They are using this money to take it away. Now, if the president wants to change the economic model is, it should be an income program, not a taxation program. How can we create jobs and put money on people's pocket? They are talking about house, uh, the housing project, which is not addressing the same issue. Kibaki came with the one stock of the pen, free primary education. When primary education became vibrant, there were a lot of business for people. People got income in their pocket and now taxes were being paid. But this government want to tax money they have not created. They want you to pay them money which they have not given you. And the government need to understand that when money is in the hands of citizens, that money belongs to government. If I give you 20,000 shillings now, immediately you go and buy lunch. You have paid taxes. You go buy bread, you do shopping. The government need to put money in people's hands. Therefore, then they can receive the money. But this way is the opposite. This government is disinterested. You will wait for forever. And if you are waiting for forever, Waswahili Wanasema, Ukingoja Meili Airport, Aita Patikana. And we have listened to the government policy. They are not interested to lower cost of living. They are feeling cost of living needs to go up. And also be honest, the cost of living never goes down. I was born buying bread five shillings. Now it's 200 shillings. What people need to do is to have more income. What are the income programs the government is creating to put money in, in people's pockets? Rather than how much will you lower bread? Because bread should be bought at the market price, supply demand forces. By saying bread should be this amount, sugar should be that amount, should not be the discussion. Discussion should be how is your income increasing? Since you are born, have you heard that the government has increased people's salary up? During Labor Day, there was no any increment in salary, uh, whether it was minimum wage or regional wage, there was none. Which means they are not interested to increase your income, which is the solution to me. Solution is have more income. There are so many methods can be done. We have written about it, we have said it, they know. The issue is they have no will. When there is a will, there is a way. And this government has no way because they have no will. Raisi atupunguzie vitu. Angalie ile vitu anaweza kupunguza za mwananchi wa chini ili tuweze kuwa tuko kitu kimoja tuache kwenda chini na mtu wa chini anaendelea kuwa chini. Wajua na siti kupanda. 
manake wajuu wa hakuna siku atasikia njaa sisi watu wa chini ndio tuna siti kwenda chini manake ukiniangalia kama hii kasi yangu hii nikinunua ngunia moja ni elefu ine kufika hapa nikiusa napata kama elefu mbili nimepata kama elefu moja ama nipate mia moja, ama mia mbili. sasa hiyo ita, itafanya nini italipa nyumba itanunua chakula ama tutauza tutafanya nini hakuna kitu inaweza fanya na kule mashambani hata tukilima mvue na kuja na katikia katikati Tunapaki mbila, utanunua chakula ya nyumbani ama utanunua ya Nairobi ama utafanya nini? Hapo sidikali atuangalie na atuangalie hata chakacha atuangalie pale alipo. Aone njenga, mkuru kwa njenga vile kumekaa. Na angalie wale watu wako hapa wanafanya kazi, wanafanyia kwa barabara. Hatuna soko. Wakuja watuangalilie watupe soko. The struggle for survival in the high cost of living is clearly evident with the people living in the Kadogo economy are forced to cut off unnecessary spending to cater for the essential commodities.